All right, Jesse on Fire, welcome back to the channel. We got some good topics to talk about today. I want to talk about how much I hate it that Dustin Poirier apologized to Connor. I hate that, man. But it was very good strategy on Dustin's part, whether it's whether it's genuine or not genuine for the fight. Very good strategy. We're going to talk about it. And then I want to talk about Jake Paul, and I want to talk about uh, Ben Askren, because Ben Askren put out a very interesting video yesterday that makes me think he's going to win. Uh, yeah, and then also after this, I'm gonna film a video, you know, like I've only been putting videos out on Jesse on everything when I feel really passionately about an issue because I was very concerned about someone at my company seeing them and getting the wrong idea and terminating me, you know, just straight up. That's what I was worried about. And I talked to my uh, boss's boss's boss today and uh, well, boss's boss. And he was like, and I straight up told him, I was like, look, man, you know, you know, I have social media following and I've been real careful about what I post because maybe there's some cultural misalignment. He's all. Hey, dude, straight up, there's nobody firing you for anything you put online. Go crazy. And I was like, hmm, all right. He's like, as long as I'm here, there's nobody firing you for something that you put online. I was like, oh, huh. well then, stay tuned for later. So I've got a video coming for that ass on Jesse and everything, and you can expect uh, more consistent uploads on that channel now. So there's that. Anyway, so after you get done watching this video, go over there. But first, let's talk about Dustin Poirier apologizing to Connor. Actually... Let's first ask for your guys' subscription before I even give you a reason to. If you like this video, smash the like button. C comment, tell me how much you like it or how much you hate it. And then subscribe or don't, I don't care. Anyway, I do care, but so let's talk about this thing. All right, so first of all, Dustin Poirier apologized to Conor McGregor on Twitter. And I, when I read it, I was like, ah, damn it, Dustin. We had so much emotion going into this thing. You know, like, come on, dude, why apologize? And then I realized, you know what? That's a smart move. It's a real smart move. You got to think about it like if you were thinking about the art of war here, right? Like, I, okay, look, let me just preface this. There's a high probability that Dustin went and talked to his people and was, and they were like, look, man, I mean, we don't really know that he was not going to pay that. And he's like, really? And they're like, yeah, we were just saying we were having a hard time getting a hold of him through email. He's like, shit. Ah, I got emotional. I got to go apologize. Totally possible, right? Also, it's possible that... Uh, I don't know. You know what? Let's just say that's possible. And then let me let me talk about this from a strategy standpoint because it's much more interesting if this is what was going on, right? So if you're going into a match, right? If you're going into a UFC fight and you're going in grudge match style, that's going to favor some types of fighters and it's not going to favor other types of fighters. I'll give you an example. Michael Chiesa does not fight better if it's a grudge match. His, and he knows it. I've interviewed him. I didn't, I didn't end up po posting the interview because... I ended up asking him a bunch of questions about the Conor McGregor situation where he threw the, you know, the dolly through the window. I didn't realize that Kiesa had like an ongoing lawsuit with Conor. And I really asked him a lot of questions. He's so nice that he kept on telling me like, you know, I can't really talk about it. And then his manager called me after and he was like, listen, man, he's like, we really can't have any of that on there. And I was like, I'm not going to try, you know, the, the relationship to his manager and him is more important than whatever I could kind of juice out of this interview. So I just decided, I was like, you know what? I'm just not even going to post it. Like, I'm just, but whatever. Michael Kiesa has proven that when he's pissed off, he doesn't fight better, right? Uh, I would say pretty confidently, Dustin Poirier would probably fall into that category as well. I don't think he's a guy that feeds on that kind of energy well. Connor, on the other hand, does he feed pretty well on that type of energy? Now, Khabib beat him, but Khabib is unbeatable as we've as we've seen historically, right? So that's not even like a, it's not even a good data point. Every time Connor's like gone in hot, he's always ripped through his opponent, right? He goes in nice against, you know, listen, I'm not taking anything away from Dustin. I'm not saying that, like, had they gone in grudge match in the last fight, that Connor would have won. But I will say that if you're going to ask me who does a grudge match favor versus a calm match, it obviously favors Connor. And so Dustin is smart to pull the air out of that beef, right? Because what's more important, selling pay per views or winning the fight? I mean, straight up, winning the fight is more important. So, yeah, you'd sell more pay per views if you guys have a, a really heated rivalry. But, uh, you know, if you're doing Art of War and the, and the end result is the most important thing, which is winning, then then yeah, pull the air out of that thing. I'm curious to see how Connor's going to respond to that, if he will respond, or if he'll just... Uh, I would imagine he's going to leave the heat on that thing. I don't think he's going to be like, hey, no problem, Dustin. Let's be jolly again. I doubt it, you know? Because if he does, then that means everything I said in my last videos was just wrong, right? That I was saying, like, he's going to now start applying psychological pressure. I don't think that he's going to allow Dustin to get out of this that easy. Uh, anyway, all right, so now let's talk about uh, Ben Askren and Jake Paul, because did anyone catch Ben Askren's open workout yesterday? Because uh, he looked a lot better than I've ever seen him look. 
You know, listen, I saw GSP say this, and I think it's funny. He said, everyone's the champion on pads. Like, everybody's the pads champion. And it's true. I mean, Ronda Rousey on pads looked like the best boxer ever. And then how's her boxing when she's in the octagon? Not very good. But uh, but one thing that, that I that I heard them talk about relating to Jake Paul and, and Robinson was when Robinson first got hit, it, they said it looked to him like, 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 like he looked like he was like, whoa, that's what getting punched actually feels like. And you got to figure he did sparring, right? Like, he, you know, he did sparring, but uh, maybe he wasn't sparring full throttle. And then when someone who's actually got power, Jake, power, Jake Paul has power, dude. And the phone with power actually really laid one on him. He was like shocked by how heavy that shot was. So, you know who's not going to be shocked by power with a boxing glove on? Ben Askren. You know, he's just not. And and when he and even if he's just champion on the pads, he's got crisp striking now. He looks, I mean, at least like his fundamentals look good. He's not going to get shocked by the power. He's not going to get tired, right? I like Ben Askren in this fight now, okay? I started off like, oh, Jake Paul, Jake Paul. And then earlier this week, I watched Ben Askren on the Logan Paul podcast. And, and Ben Askren was kind of like, hey, look, man, if he's actually good, he'll probably beat me. And I was like, oh, man, maybe Jake Paul's actually going to win. Maybe Ben Askren's underestimating him. And then I saw Ben Askren on the pads. I was like, nah, never mind. I think Ben Askren's going to win. I, I honestly wouldn't be like blown away if Jake Paul beats him. But uh, but I don't know, man. He, I mean, listen, here's what I'll say. If Jake Paul knocks out Ben Askren with boxing gloves on, he's the real deal. I mean, just straight up. He, I mean, but like, I, I don't think that's going to happen. But if he does by somehow, I mean, no one, no one can say that he's, that he isn't shit anymore. Like, no one could say that. If he knocks out Ben Askren in boxing gloves, he's the fucking real deal. Now, again, we're talking hypotheticals. I don't think that's going to happen. I think that Ben Askren is going to. I think it's going to be a dog fight, though. I don't think anybody's going to walk through the other guy. I really don't. Um, but Ben Askren's a dog, man. He really, I mean, he's just, he is. I mean, he really is. He's a tough motherfucker. He tricks you with all his, hey, uh, uh, you know, he's, he's really smart, but then he's kind of goofy, like he doesn't care. But, I mean, dude, he's he's as battle-tested as you can get, man. There's, I mean, there's nobody more battle-tested than that guy. Jake Paul is not battle-tested. Doesn't mean he's weak. Doesn't mean he's weak. He's just not tested. You don't know who he is. By the way, speaking of that, Mix Molly is back, okay? I didn't even say this on my channel because I didn't want to, like, cause alarm. I was really concerned about Mix Molly, man. Like, I was legit concerned he something might have happened to him because, like, he and I talk all the time and, you know, he was having like major health issues relating to COVID. I don't, I mean, he said that publicly. I don't think I'm revealing anything. Um, well, yeah, he said that publicly. So, uh, you know, he had a pulmonary embolism after having COVID and he was in and out of the hospital and it was like, real, I was like, and then he just disappeared. And I was like, fucking A, dude, if he died, I, there'd be no way for me to know. And he uploaded a, a great video today. It's a phenomenal video about Michael Chandler, which I highly encourage everyone to watch. And if you want to understand how I view the game, like why, what, how I view mixed martial arts and why I love the sport, watch Mix Molly's video. Watch Mix Molly Whopper's video that he did about Michael Chandler today and understand I'm rooting for Michael Chandler now. And Mix Molly is, I, I love his content so much, man. I love it. Uh, this one was especially great. And the end, we watched the very end. The part that he, like the quote at the end or like the the kind of speech that this Irish priest gives that relates kind of back to the, to the, like to the kind of meat of the video. Like I seriously just sat there after it was over and was just like, whew, whew, like it's heavy, man. Like it's fucking heavy. And I'm not being dramatic like that. The end of that, that mixed Molly video, the part with the Irish priest talking about giving last rights to people. And that whole thing that is like, it's fucking heavy, dude. Like really, really heavy. I literally just sat there afterwards and was like, fuck. Like, uh, and I don't even want to, I don't even want to allude to what it is because I want you guys to hear it from yourselves, but definitely get to the end of that video. And the last few minutes will either knock you flat or you're a pussy, basically, you know, or, you, you know, mediocrity is acceptable to you. You know, one of the, one of those. Anyway, that's what I've got. Subscribe to the channel, ring the bell, take a look at Jesse on everything. I got a big one coming right now, like a big one. So talk soon. Love you guys. Please, please.